Today we're going to cover setting up a basic mastering chain. Let's import the audio that we bounced on our last tutorial. We're going to go to the file menu, drop down to import, select import audio. And here's our track from the other day. Let's go ahead and copy this into our session. And save that to our folder. And let's import it to a new track. I'm going to double click here to get our zoom setting. The first thing I want to do is open up a master fader. So we're going to hit shift apple n. That's the key command for opening a new audio track and we'll select stereo master fader. Okay so now we have our metering that we need to add. Let's go ahead and drop in a meter here on the very bottom insert of our master section. We're going to go down to sound field select phase scope. And we'll set this over here to the side and click the hold. Let's set from peak to peak in RMS and we'll grab LEQA so we can see what our RMS readings are. And let's check the levels of the track. Okay, it looks pretty good there. We're about minus 20. Let's go to a chorus. Okay, so our peak levels and our averages look great. Uh, we're going to go ahead and turn it down a little bit. We want it peaks at about minus 6 to give headroom for our gear. So the first plug-in we're going to add is going to be the trim control. So our very first insert, we're going to drop down to multi-mono plugins. And we're going to scroll all the way to the bottom of other, very bottom, the trim control. That gives us a volume gain stage. So we're going to go ahead and turn this down by about 6 decibels. So we'll just pull this back to minus 6. And that should give us enough headroom not to clip the next plug-in in the chain. Okay, we're going to set up a very basic EQ chain today. There's a lot of theory that goes into why you would and wouldn't do certain things and what techniques and approaches to take. We'll cover that in later tutorials. Today we're going to cover a very, very basic EQ structure, uh, approaching it more like maybe EQing in a car stereo, where you're very limited to the amount of controls and frequencies. So let's go ahead and grab an equalizer on our next insert slot. And I'm going to slide down to the EQ3 7 band. This is Pro Tools basic parametric equalizer. Our first step is to get rid of noises on the low frequencies. We're going to use our high pass filter. Let's go ahead and put that in. We're going to leave it at about 20 cycles. And let's move it from 6 decibels per octave to maybe something more like 18. What that's going to do is remove any P-pops or low frequency rumbly noises that would make our speakers inefficient to try to reproduce them. Next we're going to create is our bass curve. So we're going to set the frequency to about 120 cycles. That's a good frequency for low end. It's not too subharmonic, not too uh, mid bass, but it'll give you a nice amount of punch and presence out of the bass guitars or kick drum or low frequency instruments. The next thing we need to do is change this from a shelf to a bell curve, and we're going to leave the Q at 1. The next band we're going to set up is going to be our mid band. So let's skip one. We'll come back to this guy. We're going to go over here and we'll set this one to about 2,500 cycles. That's 2.5K. So that's going to give us a nice boost in the mid-range, which will affect any mid-instruments where our message and music is. Our vocals, guitars, other support instruments, background vocals. This is already a bell curve, so we'll just leave the Q at 1, and let's go to our treble curve. So we'll go to the next one in line. This one we're going to set a much higher frequency, somewhere between 15 and 18K. So let's go ahead and bring this up to about 15. And we're going to leave the Q at 1 again. We just want a nice bell curve. And that should work out great for our treble curve. Let's go ahead and turn this one off. We're not going to use the, the last band here. And let's go to our low mid frequency. Now somewhere between 250 and 350 cycles in a mix, we generally have a lot of mud. So let's take right at about 300. And we'll just take a little bit out there. Now a bell curve, if we were to reduce with this, it's going to be very wide, as you can see on this curve. We want to narrow that down to more of a notch. So let's take our Q from 1 to maybe somewhere closer to 4 to 6 even. Let's try about 5. That looks good. We don't want to take too much out there. Now 6 decibels, obviously, is going to be way too much. So let's start over here on our base. We'll give this 1 decibel of a boost. We're going to take out 1 down here at about 300. Maybe one and a half. Let's boost one decibel here 
on our mid curve at 2.5K, and we'll give about a DB up here as well on our 15 to 18K boost. Now what these are going to do, you'll notice very slight change in the way the audio sounds. You're just going to get a little more energy out of the bottom end, a little less muddiness, a little more boost of action and activity, I, I guess you'd say, in the mid-range. And we have our shimmer and details from reverb and room tone and ambience will be enhanced slightly by the 18K. So let's take a very quick listen at our intro and we'll pull in and out the EQ. So we'll start with it out and let's take a listen. So I hear the organs and the snare drum and some of the reverbs, especially when the cymbal hit, were affected quite nicely with that. And the mid-range really brought out some natural tones in the keyboards. Okay, so that wraps up setting up our basic EQ. The idea here isn't really to fix a whole lot of stuff or to emphasize a whole lot of things, just giving ourselves some broad strokes to add a little intensity and a little extra energy to our existing mix. Now let's move on to compression. 